Hello my friends and welcome to an episode of Inside Electronics. I am Uncle Misha and today we are looking at this trot free button here. This is again another toy from IKEA. Now I would like to incorporate this sort of thingy into my lighting solution. Luckily I have this Ansluka power supply and it has apparently trot free built in and if you saw my tear down of this uh, guy before here is the video over here this is the link uh, this thing uh, definitely has a little microcontroller right somewhere here so hypothetically and this is by the way I think a button you see it's actually shining so this is for pairing so hypothetically I can use this power supply with this trot free to adjust the uh, power output right here on this connector right so let's try to take a look what the heck is this what's inside and how it works together I think trot free stuff appeared in IKEA quite a while now um, probably several years ago I actually hadn't had the chance to play with all this jazz and this is my first trot free device don't know anything much about it so today is gonna be the day when I figure out how this shit works alright so what do we have we have this box uh, here we are, containing a battery the, the, the button itself which is looks like it's magnetic which is cool so it's sort of portable user manual which we're not gonna read maybe because I don't, I don't know actually how to connect it so yeah, I'm gonna put it aside, I'm gonna ditch it at the moment. Box we don't need. So here's some mountain hardware. I think you can either glue it to the wall or to this spot, or you can screw it. So if you screw it like this, that's nice. Yeah, that's actually well done. I'm not sure what the heck is this one. Ah, oh, it's probably in case you want to fix it permanently this is like double-sided tape and this is double-sided 3m tape to mount this one to a surface and ikea battery so in order to i assume in order to replace put ikea battery have to like open it up is it mm. mm -hmm, a little magnet a battery okay but we're not gonna stop here we will continue digging Okay, uh, I kind of observed a little bit. Looks like this thing has this rubber gasket, which make this area be sort of waterproof, tight-ish, and it has this this outer part sort of hinges on uh, on this inner part and uses a uh, some sort of two buttons which are here. So this part is stationary. This outer part is moving, and I see that the, there is a two hinges right here. One hinge. I try to dislodge right here and another hinge just right here looks like I need a little bit more pressure to actually get to it so what I want to do okay so this hinge is blocked hope I didn't break it but at least it's blocked okay let's try to, to get to another hinge it's much harder because I need more stronger side all right hope I don't gonna break it I don't want to break it now we can try sort of pull it out here we are aha uh -huh. here we are so this is we have two buttons clearly which are um, up and down I think and we have this enclosure this is pretty solid enclosure so this is one unit uh, rubber over here and rubber completely sealing everything on this side but I think I can just pop it yeah it's unless it's glued it could be glued it's probably glued yeah it's glued on the perimeter it's not completely not 100% glued um, 
Oh yeah, okay, now it's gonna be much easier. Oh, it's just a uh, just, uh, sticky glue, so yeah, I would be able to put it back. Nice. That's cool. I would be able to put it back, it's still kind of sticky. But or I just re-glue it, or just forget it. That's cool, it's even his has an, it's even has an LED here, which probably... I don't know, it's, you're not gonna see it unless you're gonna see it through, through this, I don't know, unless you're gonna see it through this, maybe you can see it through here, maybe it's gonna blink, yeah, potentially you're gonna see it through here, yes, it's like this, I guess, so yeah, this is gonna see the LED through this little less plasticky part. We have obviously some sort of microcontroller over here, uh, something else, I don't know, flash memory, I don't know, this is, yeah, I'm gonna zoom in even more and just understand what the heck is going on here. We have resonator, a whole bunch of components, okay, just wondering why do you need that many components, but you know some lots of passives even a little tiny inductor clearly inductor is if you have inductor here that's a part of the a voltage conversion circuit not sure if this u2 is actually some sort of fancy voltage converter i thought that's gonna be just as good as you just apply 3 volts straight to microcontroller and have to do any voltage conversion but apparently it's not curious what that 9 d90 means uh yeah so i'll try to take a look a little bit closer on that and that in a second and then uh, and give you some more info oh there is another inductor here so like few it has few inductors so this tiny inductor right here and there is another l3 so uh, assuming it's uh, all numbered should be somewhere l1 i don't see it but l3 and l2 are just right here it's very interesting so i'm gonna also i'm gonna try to make a picture of this uh, i'm not sure if i can pop this board completely out all right guys here i got some info so this microcontroller is silicon lab EF afr32 mg1p well this uh, 132gy this is just a type of uh, processor so this is 40 megahertz arm cortex m4 256 kilobyte flash 32 ram it is multi-protocol a um, device which can do zigbee bluetooth le and thread and also some proprietary protocol this is pretty cool a little device actually i i like it this is family of um, some kind of gecko stuff i'm not really familiar with all these jobs but i do have silicon lab demonstration bluetooth module which actually runs on similar chip i had some time poking around with that guy and here is my uh silicon lab a a little uh, review and tear down alrighty so this is uh, this is quite powerful little beast and it is uh, runs zigbee all trot free uh, from ikea runs zigbee and there are people actually hacking this stuff and the reason i thought about hacking because i noticed all this so this is five connectors reset vcc tms clock and ground so this is not serial uh, i'm not sure what protocol what um interface is this i have to figure this out but uh yeah uh, this is interesting that it's available here so technically this can be reprogrammed um this thing over here is a ee prom is i4 beb2 what's the uh what's the size of it i don't know so this is p1 and 948 it's another row of letters here so but clearly this is external external um eprom not 100 percent sure again if it's spi or anything like that because could not find any information if you have anything please help me um that's pretty much it there is no more active componentry here there is a whole bunch of passives related to voltage uh, regulation potentially there is another micro uh, chip right here i do not see it related just for the yeah just for the uh, regulation but uh, unless it's done all passive i don't see anything uh in addition to those two big u2 and u1 um, microchips here so let's try to put uh, this little device back in its original shape and try to connect it to my Ansluta power supply. 
Okay, I assemble it and put also the battery inside, connected. Uh, it's powered up at the moment, and but I decided not to put this one yet. At least we're gonna see what's going on right under this and gonna press these buttons our, ourselves. And then also I'm not sure if this has to go like this or like this. It's something I have to double check. So, so I have prepared my Ansluta power supply here. Also, uh, I have prepared this light. You saw it in uh, one of the others, other reviews. So let's just power the light up. Okay, it's all bright. Let's just put it aside because it's too bright at the moment. It's not gonna look on it. Okay, so uh, I think the protocol is supposed to be like this. Now I see and I have to unscrew it back on because the connect button or link button is just right here. Okay, so I'm pressing this one. I'm pressing this one, and I'm pressing this one, nothing really happening. Okay, uh, I have an update, looks like I was wrong. So this trot free stuff is not working with this Ansluta power transformer or power 24 power um, uh, voltage regulator because apparently that guy was using its own uh, remote controller which is incompatible with this guy so well this is sad because this essentially means I can just like it's not that of a big deal I can just turn it on and off the problem is I can turn it on and off only using the this oh, here we are only this which is obviously super annoying so I guess I have to MacGyver something. It's possible, but it's not ideal. All right. So um, well, in this uh, with this uh, latest discovery, I probably have to pack it all together and probably return it because nothing else I can do. All this just is not gonna be working the way I want it, unfortunately. Because this is actually was pretty pretty cool. Now I have to find this Ansluta compatible, Ansluta old school Ansluta compatible. Um, a, um, a remote because this is not gonna work but nevertheless that's not was not about Ansluta this was about trot free now we learned one inside this little guy and we learned the that it's not working with Ansluta uh, unfortunately I won't be able to demonstrate how to pair it I won't be able to demonstrate how it works because I don't have compatible device um, okay guys I I think it was uh, semi useful for me and I, I hope it's going to be useful for you and if you want to see more video please like and subscribe please support the channel any comments I'll be happy to hear from you thank you for watching and see you next time